So, the big question is this. How can runners like you, who aren't professional athletes or paid sponsored runners, fix, heal, and correct lingering run injuries so you can enjoy your passion for running for the rest of your life? That is the question. And on runpainfreepodcast.com, your host, Jessica Marie Rose Leggio, gives you the answers. Hello, everyone. I am Jessica Marie Rose Leggio. Thank you for tuning in to the Run Pain Free podcast on the Run Pain Free YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be going over heart training and the importance of that for runners. Now, let's get into the video. Injury Pathways to the Root Cause. All right, everybody. So injury pathways. We're on to our injury analysis, getting to the root cause of heart damage in runners. And it is sponsored by runpainfreenow.com. So first things first, we're going to go over how the heart actually works. Okay. So the heart comes in from the right, from the body into the right atrium and the right side of the heart, right atrium, right ventricle. Then it goes to the pulmonary artery goes out. That blue is think of it like oxygen. It's going out into the lungs. Then it comes back into the heart to the left side left atrium, left ventricle, and then goes out into the rest of the body and fuels the whole body. It's important to know that because those two bottom lower chambers, the right ventricle and left ventricle are the biggest chambers of the heart. The left ventricle is where the um, heavy volume, too much volume, I don't want to say too much volume, but the overuse of volume or the pushing of volume rather is where that left ventricle becomes thicker. And it's important to understand that that's how the heart works. The left side of the heart is where it goes out to the rest of the body. So that's important to, to talk about. So now this is what it looks like when your arteries are clogging, that's plaque. So when it starts to get plaque on it, it narrows and you have less fluid ability to run through it smoothly that's that's what would be a heart attack okay it's, it's very important you understand the difference this is what a heart attack looks like remember what i said the right comes in goes out through the pulmonary artery then goes out to the lungs gets oxygenated comes back into the left and then left goes out now this going really blue is showing you that it's losing oxygen and so the heart goes spastic this is a heart attack there's a blockage of sorts this is when the heart goes bananas it gets all off because it's not getting the proper pump with the oxygen to it to get it out so basically it loses oxygen and it stops this happens this doesn't mean you drop this can happen you don't even this minor heart attacks can happen without even knowing okay and people for the most part honestly do have little mini heart attacks before they have a massive every little heart attack you have a little part of the heart dies and it creates scar tissue because it dies off keep that in mind now this is actual physical picture of scar tissue on the left ventricle this is important for you to understand because if you've ever heard, uh, and in the bottom picture, that's what it looks like when that gets bigger and when, when it gets bigger and bigger and gets thicker. Again, look, it's the left ventricle. It's rarer for you to get that scarring on the right side because really the scarring is coming from the, the loaded volume, too much of that consistently. So look at the scar tissue on the real picture. That's a real picture of somebody's heart. When that continues over and over and over again from that left side, getting so much more pump and so much more out, it creates a thickening of the wall. The thickening of the wall changes the physical structure of the heart. And so it doesn't pump blood efficiently or functionally or symmetrically, I should say. I, I could say symmetrically. I could say symmetrically. So that's really what that looks like. And that's what it would look like over time, over time, over time. Okay, now, the autonomic nervous system. Pay attention, long haulers and pots people. This is what dictates that. The autonomic nervous system dictates the function of the heart. The entire heart is dictated by the autonomic nervous system. It's electrical. 
That's why the electrophysiologist is the most specialized doctor of the heart. That's who I've dealt with, electrophysiologist. So this is important. This is, the, this is an actual visual of the autonomic nervous system. And you'll see the only organ you see is the heart because that's what dictates it. So why is this important, Jessica? Because sudden cardiac arrest is electrical. And this is what a normal EKG would look like. Everybody can see that. Doop, doop. It's a normal, nice, beautiful heart rhythms. The minute the bottom two chambers start getting incoherent signals, that's what the EKG looks like. It, the, the electrical signals start to rapidly fire and the pump of the muscle heart can't keep up. The heart starts to quiver. It goes into tachycardia, which is a very rapid heartbeat, and it stops. That, that's a problem. That's when people are actually dropping on a course. So let's talk about the differences. Heart attack is when you have a blood flow problem. That means you got like clogged arteries. That's a clogged artery issue. Cardiac arrest is an electrical problem. It's a bigger deal. And here is why. The these two distinct heart conditions I'm reading from, this is American Heart Associ Association, who I'm a member of, and I've gone through many heart peer-reviewed journals, cardiovascular journals that study marathons, study runners, study endurance athletes. And through all of that, I think this was most important for me to put up here and to explain it. Uh, these two distinct heart conditions are linked. Sudden cardiac arrest can occur after a heart attack. Pay attention. Or during recovery of a heart attack. Heart attacks increase the risk of sudden cardiac arrest. Many heart attacks don't immediately lead to sudden cardiac arrest, but when a sudden cardiac arrest occurs, the heart attack is a common cause. Other heart conditions may also disrupt the heart's rhythm and lead to sudden cardiac arrest. These include thickened heart muscle. That's what I just showed you, cardiomyopathy, heart failure, arrhythmias, particularly ventricle fibrillation, AFib, and long QI syndrome. Cardiomyopathy is going to be a bigger deal for a runner because of what I just said before, because it's coming from the thickening of the muscle wall. And also AFib, tachycardia, it's associated with ventricle, it's ventricle v VTAC, ventricle tachycardia. So this is really important for you to understand. A heart attack can happen and not kill you. I'm just gonna say it, I'm just gonna be blunt. The sudden cardiac arrest can. And it's, remember, you're not gonna, you wouldn't have a cardiac arrest and then a heart attack. You would have a heart attack and then sudden cardiac arrest. And it can happen after the fact. Okay. Phidippides. The, the glorified soldier who ran a marathon distance to deliver news and dropped dead right there. This is something that happened 2,500 years ago, but it is glorified. There's a statue of him. It's in Marathon, Greece, hence the term marathon. Everybody glorifies. But now, 2,500 years later, there's actual medical journals that are using this to say, hey, endurance running has had a heart adverse effect for 2,500 years, and it's never gotten the airtime that it deserves. It's never getting talked about as it deserves. And then Makai True, who is also known as Caballo Blanco, which means white horse. His real name is Michael Randall Hickman. He gave him safe Makai True. Makai, he just pulled out of the Bible and True from a book, I believe he read. But his real name is Michael Randall Hickman. He's known, born to run. That's, that's, that's what the whole book is based on him. This is him, look at him. Phenomenal physique. Somebody will look at him and say, no way he has any health issues. He runs ultras in his, in his sleep. Yet he died on a 12 mile run. Couldn't find him. They had to search out for him for days and days. Runners came from all over the country to find him, to help him, to run the route he was running, to find him thinking he was hurt. When they did an autopsy, they found an enlarged heart full of scars. 
scarring is real. I'm going to go back. That's real. When you have enough scar tissue on your heart, it disallows function of that part of the heart. It no longer pumps blood functionally anymore. It doesn't. So it's going to keep doing it, but just like every other muscle in the body, it's going to compromise. And it does that by starting to make the, because the pumping isn't happening well, it's not going to pump out to the body well, which means the rest of the body is not going to get oxygenated blood well. Your muscle pump is going to be different. The pump in your legs, which is the biggest muscle group in the body and requires the most blood pump, is going to be even harder to pump the blood back up to your heart. And everything starts going around and around we go. And the whole time, that heart is pumping, boy. Why? Because the physical runner feels that and thinks push harder. Things push harder. The more you push, though, you're going to get more damage. The more damage, the more repair. The more repair, the more scar tissue. The more scar tissue, the more scarring. The more scarring, the less function. And over time, that starts to lead to muscle. The, the muscle can't function anymore. You, you will. You could have more minor heart attacks and not know it, but that will lead to sudden cardiac death, which is how that happened. But it was glorified. When I bring this up to people, they don't know that. They think he died from heart disease. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. He died from an enlarged heart full of scarring. That's the problem I have. Speak about it truthful. Be truthful. Let people know. Should you be scared? Yeah, a little. Yeah, because fear makes you research. Fear makes you dig or fear makes you stop. All three are going to have a positive effect for you. You're going to research and figure out why you should know about the heart. You're going to learn about the heart. You're going to dig deeper, learn about the heart. You're going to get yourself all, way, all the way together. Or you're going to stop. All, good, all, are good, all are good positives because if you don't know what you're doing to your heart, you shouldn't be running. How about them apples? That's what people don't get. They're out here talking all this jazz, know nothing about the autonomic nervous system. Wait till I go in on that. Wait, because that's next. Not in this injury analysis, but it's coming up. And this is the, in, your heart does not function without the autonomic nervous system. Guess what the autonomic nervous system dictates? Blood pressure, body temperature, digestion, kidney function, breathing, brain function, optical nerve. Ooh every cell in your body gets their indicators from that autonomic nervous system fight or flight rest or digest but you all are out here i'm just going to get out there and go running wonderful i think it's great everybody should be moving and i think every human being should be running i think every human being should be running learn about it first stop listening to your friends who know nothing and act like they know everything because they ran a few marathons lord jesus so this is why it's important to understand the difference between heart attack and cardiac arrest. Once again, heart attack is when, let me just give you back up on the screen. Heart attack is when you have a blood flow issue and there's a blockage to your heart, which I could go in with an angiogram, go up through your groin, which is a representative of a space on your body, not a, mu not a muscle, okay? And they go up and with a camera, they see if you have a blockage on any of your valves, put amazing work. They go in there and they separate it with a stint, create blood flow or put a different valve in. My grandfather had a piggy valve for 30 years. Uh, they do that and you're fine. Or sudden cardiac arrest. That's an electrical heart because the heart is malfunctioned and it just stops beating. When a heart attack happens, it goes crazy. <laughs> When you go to cardiac arrest, it just stops because it goes, it goes, it, the, the, the incoherent signals between electricity and the pump go bananas. They can't get it back together. That's why you need to know how to do a defibrillator because if you can reset the electrical part of the heart, you can reset it and prevent death. But you have seven to 10 minutes to do that when someone goes into cardiac arrest, which is why medical personnel should be fully lining the last five, six miles to a marathon. And there should be extra ones at the last mile because here's this ringer right here. The least amount of finishers 
come through the finish line, come through the last mile of a marathon. But it is the most place where people go into cardiac arrest. The last mile has the least amount of finishers and the most amount of cardiac arrest. So medical personnel should be lined up there all with defibrillators, all ready to go, all with paddles. Everybody should have, it should be all right there, lined. It's important you understand these two because you can have a heart attack, survive, and then while you're recovering, you could go into cardiac arrest. And cardiac arrest is the, the result of, not result, Having a cardiac arrest, it's most common that a heart attack is what led to it. You need to know those things as a runner. You just do. So this is what we wanted to go over today. It's simplified as much as possible. I'm gonna go over in another segment, specifics about everything I just talked about, but this is heart damage, this is how it occurs, this is what happens to the runner. And how we come out of this is we train the heart down. We train the heart down. We learn about our hearts. We learn about our own personal baseline. There's nothing generalized in health and fitness, let alone in a sport and God help you for heart training. There's nothing generalized in that whatsoever. Never will be, never gonna be. Don't ask about it. Don't Google what the right zone to be in is. It's not right. It's not yours. It's not your zone. It's not your heart rate. It's not your life. It's not you. You need to train it down for yourself. So you need to get with somebody who actually knows what they're doing. Runpainfreenow.com, just saying. If you're in this for the long haul, make sure you're doing it well. Make sure you're doing it healthy. Know if you're pushing or not. You may not even think you're pushing. Most people don't, but you are. That's the problem. Nobody gets it. When I went into my cardiologist appointments at first in the early, in early stages of my issues, I can speak the language. I have, a bio, I have a biology background. I have degrees in biological health science. So I could speak the, but they would look at me and say, oh, you're fine. You're in your 30s. There's nothing wrong with you. You're an athlete. You've been an athlete forever. You're totally fine. And I had to go left on all of them to school them not. And lo and behold, Jess wasn't fine. <laughs> so there you go. So I hope that gives you a premise to it. Listen in on all of our segments when it comes to heart training. I'm going in on everything much deeper. So I hope that that gives you good insight to start digging and coming into the next segment. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Run Pain Free podcast. Be sure to like this video and post in the comments. I want to hear from you on the last time that you changed your run program specifically based on things going on with your heart. And that's the finish line for today's episode. You're not just a runner. You're the key to your healing. Learn how to run stronger after injury at runpainfreenow.com. Until next time, athlete, athlete, athlete.